Okay, welcome everybody. This is October 10, OSC Developers Meeting. Please mute yourself. Um, let me mute you guys. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, the, the working doc here is as normal at the team meeting page, but here's the link. Okay, that's the link. As far as the development meetings page, that is always at the development team log. Development team log page on the wiki, so you can find it there. Okay, so a couple of things, uh, just uh, background for today, uh, page one there. Uh, things are going along. We've got the the burn down, sorry, the burn the development effort graph. It's it's good. It's looking decent. We have about ten or eleven contributing people on a regular basis. We're up at about 160 hours per week. That's pretty pretty decent. And of course, we want to build the team up as we go along. Um, one one intro is that one point of intro on a team fr front. <clears throat> besides. Uh, an active effort to to recruit an HR person right now. We do have a couple of uh, applicants actually that we're working with, so hopefully we have somebody that's doing recruiting of subject matter ex experts as as well as contributors. <clears throat> Let me share my screen here as well, so you guys can see. <clears throat> mm -mm. Okay, uh, one one piece of news is that Michael, who's been doing our web admin work, has been promoted to the senior system admin. He's put in enough hours, essentially, and done a lot of work. <clears throat> He's doing pretty much high-level work on the back end there, pretty much cleaning up the, the messes from before. Our next immediate priority there is actually to install Jitsi on our own server so we can host the larger types of development meetings that would have like webinars essentially so we can have 50 or 100 people seamlessly on our own server so that's that's pretty good then a the second priority on the server which we haven't taken steps yet but but i mean we got to install our own our own email software so basically mass emails as well as you know keeping track of all our lists which which uh, we're just using gmail right now and as we scale into the future we do want to have good access to sending emails because if you don't, I mean, it actually gets expensive if you want to send out like, you know, once you get to 10,000 or like 100,000, you know, it's going to cost you like 100 bucks a month just to send out emails uh, using services like MailChimp. So that, that's important for the future. Okay. Um, do One piece of uh, admin here. Do we have a note taker for today? <clears throat> we need somebody to take notes so that we have a summary a decent summary for what what transpired today can we get somebody to do that um anyone okay josh thank you uh please do so all right uh next item so i mentioned in the last meeting about the tech for trade they have the the open the filament maker turns out it's currently not open source i you know i asked them so so the question you ask is so what's your license because everyone you know a lot of people say they're real quick. Can yeah you make the document editable ah sorry sorry about that <clears throat> can edit save public on the web <clears throat> okay should be done scream if it's not um i mentioned tech for trade last time they have a uh, working PET filament maker <clears throat> that's apparently like way better than uh, the Lyman which we're in the process of doing still but it turns out the magic question is what's your license it turns out it's CC by NC non-commercial and a non-open source license so I asked them if they can change it to an open source license where you can actually uh, replicate it uh, if it's NC, mean, that means you can't use it for commercial purposes. In other words, we couldn't, for example, run workshops with it or produce it or anything like that. So uh, we'll see if they agree to that. The, the guy who's there is friendly, but he has to check with his boss whether the license they're open to uh, licensing it under an open source com Oshawa compli compliant license. So that's, <clears throat> that's that. I was really excited about it because actually Dr. Pierce, Joshua Pierce, uh, forward me that info and he said oh it's open source and Joshua is a uh, he's a master of open source he's one of the good guys 
but he actually didn't know that the guys he was, was working with were NC, non-commercial, meaning we couldn't, uh, we can't work with it. Okay, moving on. So the big projects that we have on our plate are CNC torch, the micro track and tractor, and then Michelle with WebGL stuff. So let's start with a torch. So the, the, this weekend is the workshop coming up, right up this weekend. So we've got the torch here. We've got torch holder, insulation blanket here for holding this. So this will mount on our gantry, the one inch, one inch axis gantry. So go to page four. This is what we have right now. There's a bunch of small changes that we need to make. And I looked at the physical system, which we prototyped in part. And actually, it turns out that the, the main thing we, we need to work on is enlarging the spaces for the bushings, which are, so if you look at the file, you could go to the working document and go to the D3D CNC torch table page. So, so that page is called the D3D uh, CNC torch table. You can download, the, all the files are there. The wor there's working documents there, and at the end you have a link to the at the end there's the CNC torch table version 17.08 part library link at the links section um, yeah actually it's under the CAD you see the links so if you if you want to download the CAD to look at this go to the part library uh, link right under CAD so if you take a look at that if you look at my screen here so this is the current uh, holder for the bearings for the torch. Uh, basically, that's the secret weapon here. The idea is we made this as such a small piece so that it's bound together by metal. So you can print this very quickly, as opposed to making the whole whole long piece with four holders as one long piece. You, you can really save on printing, so that's why we cut it down to this very small size. But then you you put two of them together side by side and then put metal on top of that to hold it together to make your carriage. So that's a good idea. Now let's take a look at the detail here. So this bushing here, the diameter of that should be about, uh, just take a measurement real quick, what do we have? We have 1.30 inches and the outer diameter of the actual bearing, the, the sorry it's a bushing, it's a, it's a brass bushing that's 1.25 so it's there's 0 0.05 greater here that's good but we want to enlarge that I wouldn't en enlarge it to maybe like 1.4 or something like that we can probably keep yeah just enlarge that because uh, right now what happens when you clamp this stuff down using the metal the bearings get tight around the shafts why? Because if you don't have perfect alignment, uh, if it's tight fitting, and you don't, if you don't, and if you don't have perfect alignment, it's going to be tight. So that's just one thing. I made a special note of that because I just t took a look at it, what we have in the workshop here, and what it turns out is that definitely, like once you tighten down everything to make the metal clamp with these for the carriage, it's hard to slide it on the on the rods because the bearings get tight because they're not perfectly aligned. Uh, so what we need to do is make this hole a little bigger such that the bearings have very slight play that they never pinch or bite down on the shaft itself. So that's for the people working on a torch table. And I'll get back to that as we... I'll just go through all that we have. So, so more... Let's see what else. Um, yeah, it turns out also that this holder is good for both the 1 inch and 1.05 inch shaft which is the 1.05 is 3 quarter inch NPT pipe this works of course the bushing um, you can't use the bushing with the pipe avenue but you can do what we can do we can still do that quarter bushing thing if we like to and I think we will uh, we can just glue it in place don't worry about modifying like like epoxy it into place uh, don't worry about modifying the actual 3D printed piece to accept a quarter bushing, which is a detail here. But we can um, we can do the pipe route as well. So I, I do look forward to we we do probably want to do the 10 foot long 5 by 10 foot axis. Okay, next uh, next in line solar power cubes. Uh, Tom is actually working on a solar power cube for the tractor build. 
uh, that's coming along. You can go to the uh, Solar Cube version, Solar Power Cube version 17.10. Um, that's the page there. Very small power cube, it's a one cubic foot. And it's got a small reservoir, it's got an electric motor that can be run by a solar panel. Now in this case what you see in the picture is the solar panel running the fan on a power cube, just the fan really, because the the engine on a fan, it does, the engine that we use doesn't have a lot of charging power, and we need a good fan for the power, big power cube. Uh, that's with the brick press, that's back from Utah. Uh, but the so solar power cube will be run on a single panel and will go about a thousand feet per day, so for an autonomous tractor application, so that's moving forward. Uh, tonight I'm meeting with Matt Droder, who is working on a GPS ver controller. Um, we're currently planning on a Raspberry Pi, though okay the link to the document once again that's uh, yeah it's in there. Raspberry Pi is the current route. I'm, I'm gonna see if we can maybe do the the GPS. I don't know if it's possible to do it with Arduino. I don't know if Arduino has enough power but all you need to do is read so you're reading positional signals and then saying, okay, the Arduino can read it, and it says, okay, control the tractor this such and such way. So it seems like an Arduino GPS would be also quite acceptable. We, we may not have to go to the Raspberry Pi, but we've got only two and a half weeks to go, really, almost, almost three weeks. Let's see, today is the 10th, one, two, wow, it's, it's literally like two weeks away, a little over two weeks away, so... Yeah, and and the next slide talks about the robotic Ross robotic operating system tractor. That's Matt Droder. Uh, he started a group called RossAgriculture.org. Uh, they're working on automated robot operating system. So that's Ross. That's an open source project. So he's combining agriculture with that Ross project. So that's good it's that, that that's what we talked about last week arduino with rc shield raspberry pi open source gps module rc controller and then you got solenoids driving your hydraulic wheel motors that's what that is okay more report on the ceb press from the university of utah that's why i went to i set them up they're all up and running they have a demo day coming up so that's on a slide number eight uh if you're in utah on october 23rd that's where you can go the updated controller, this is what we have for the controller at this point. That's that's where we're at with that uh, simple box. Now, what I'm thinking for the next version, um, we can definitely 3D print the box like we did for the, the filament maker and do a simpler controller. Right now we're using our special, like a, our custom OSC controller board, but you don't need to do that. I mean, it's only four solenoids, basically get four relays, and a simple circuit and that's it. It's four relays in an Arduino and basically does it including some snubber diodes on the actual relays. But it's simple. It's too simple to have a dedicated board for it. We want it to be replicated more. Uh, no specialized board ne boards needed here. So we'll go back to more simplicity which we've done before but we migrated from that because we were having trouble with the wiring but right now the controller is so simple there's only one sensor and uh, we can put the snubber diodes on the solenoids. There's two solenoids. Good enough. Okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, micro tracks. So we've been doing some work on on stuff. Abe, hey, you want to fill us in where you're at on, on all the stuff you've done? You, you, you worked some on the PTO motor, I see. Track pads. How is that? You got... Uh, I'm going to pipe in. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I did some work on some of these parts and stuff, but I was mostly trying to go back and rebuild a bunch of the smaller parts on the track and some of these other parts kind of from the sketches up because I was having certain bugs or glitches I was running to and arranging some of those parts into the CAD before, into the, uh, the master CAD. Uh, so I thought I'd go back and adjust uh, a bunch of these parts and kind of finish some of the uh -huh. things that weren't constrained. But then I started moving on to the, the whole nesting 
operation earlier the last couple of days um, because I, I think there's some uh, there may be some adjustments or changes to some of these parts anyway like some of the plates that can be rounded off or they may need to be adjusted slightly because um, there, there's maybe some some issues with like the track and the way it's arranging uh, around the idlers it might kind of be a little close to some things so the parts may need to be lengthened or shortened a little anyway mm -hmm. so right. I'm still trying to figure out uh, get the track right that, that track is just uh, a little difficult to do um, I think question track right track within freecad you saying within freecad within freecad or nesting part is difficult uh, the the nesting has been buggy. I, I just posted a thing to the FreeCAD forms about that too. Uh, I figured a couple different ways to export SVGs. The way you hold on, hold on just a sec. Hold on just a sec. Are you using the nesting capacity within FreeCAD? Uh, no, I haven't tried that yet. I believe it's fairly alpha, and I don't know that it's compatible. Right, with right. To work with our parts yet from what what I read on that, but I need to test that too, but I've been testing a variety of other things, so um, okay. first I was trying to export SVGs from the drawing bench, that, that doesn't work, so but it, it ends up not working pretty much the same way when you convert to 2D view and get the uh, scalable vector graphics files out of out of the flattened view, it, it just doesn't uh, produce files or, or vector graphics that are compatible with SVG nest, which is contrary to what I've seen posted elsewhere on like the FreeCAD forum. So as I said, I, I posted there to ask because I don't, I don't know what step I might be missing. I also had some other feedback uh, from other people. I think they tried some of this and they had a lot of bugs too, which SVG nest is known to have some bugs with certain types of uh, really art or, or the line art, the vector art in there. Uh, like uh, the curves, some of the splines or arcs, I think often cause issues. But I was hoping to see if it would work with most of our our parts anyway. But I haven't been able to get any to work yet. So, so you talking svgnest.com on on the internet is just really buggy. Well, it has some bugs, that, and people I keep seeing references that this suggest that people are exporting and using that for some parts, but it. It has not worked with the files that I've been able to export so far. Okay. All right. I, well, huh. Well, on it. I, I don't know why. Because okay. Because it sounds like some people have figured that out. So All I'm right. hoping for some feedback on that so from... So do, uh, do you have a sample nest file? Like, did you did you try... What, what samples have you tried? Um, I tried using a variety of parts, and it could be different parts. I think okay. The part that I got exported that looked good from um, from FreeCAD was like the PTO mount part. But the big problem is that you're supposed to export a a bin, which is the four by eight sheet. So you just have this square that's the size or the scale, you know, size of your sheet, and you're supposed to select that, and then it it puts all the other parts into that. It arranges them into that. The problem is is that the files don't the vector graphics aren't quite right somehow uh, okay. when they're exported because I can't select the bin as a whole component. It just wants to select the individual line segments, and they're supposed to be supposedly continuous line segments, so it's a single part. Right. And okay. It's okay. not. The so, files aren't coming out that way. Can you try... Can I ask you to do this? Because uh, So actually this weekend, so we've got the torch table build, and I expect that we're going to get this running, and we want to do some sample cuts... Can you do um so step one generate the the part cuts for for the track like one track pad so first do do one part which is just manually put that in and then if we have a lot of them I mean we eventually want to cut a lot of them but can you start by doing doing one and then um, you think you'd be able to do that by this weekend because we arrange all yeah just of take the track parts. Well, just take start with one. So, so when we're going to be cutting, the first cut will be okay. Let's cut a sample line or something like that. But then, once we cut lines and things like that, everything is working. One good thing to do this weekend would be to to cut out an actual track pad. 
So, so just a single one. So that means what, like one, two, three, four, four pieces. So the two, two things with the hole, one pad, and one ring. That uh, the ring that's in between the the track pads. Um, yeah. Okay. So just a, a sample of a of a single. Link. Yeah. 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 That 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 should be easy to do. Uh, mm -hmm. to, I think I'll just export DXFs. Um, yeah. Because actually, that's something I haven't looked at either. Is how the the torch software does it, it? I assume that it needs DXFs and not necessarily. Um, well, we need G, we need G code. So what we need to go is to go from DXF to G code converter within Inkscape would be one way to go. Oh, so I'm, yeah. So what I'm looking at is run the G code in Marlin. So basically the same same code. Basically put that into treat it like make believe you have a 3D printer, and you're, instead of the 3D printer, you're actually running the big CNC torch table. So we can use the same tool chain. So but running the G code in Marlin. So that would be the 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 case we want to do this weekend. Yeah, just very simple, just just first cuts. Yeah. But if you could actually, you know, so do the one manual thing, but then after you got the manual thing, I mean, see if you can make a bunch of those things actually get nested using the application. Maybe maybe you'll have better luck. Um Michelle, is Michelle on a, on a team here today? Um no. I don't have I don't think we have Michelle on online here. But um, he pointed us to this application. Maybe he knows a little better what what could make it work. Maybe he maybe um, let's let's talk to him as well since he found this application. He might know a little more. So let's let's do that. Um, so so first do a one sample pad, one sample uh, link, and then try multiples in the SVG nest application. Does that sound good? Yeah, I'm gonna keep working on it. There's a few different possible software applications for that nesting stuff too, I think. Uh, but so far, it's been a little buggy. Um, I think okay. one question on the tracks is, I, I thought I remember before there was a discussion in the meeting about uh, the track links and whether we're going to bolts or not. I think I think some of the examples use bolts or something, but or some of the videos had bolts. But I think if I understand correctly, you're still using. Um, yeah, you know, actually, I think the bolt is the easiest edge. route because it already has a head on it, so we don't have to make all these pins. We can just get oh. a bunch of bolts because otherwise, you're cutting a pin, you're welding a cap on it, and you're drilling a hole through it for a pin. That's a lot of work. So okay. we can use bolts. So the bolts are expensive, obviously. If you're using a high grade bolt, or no, it doesn't have to be high sure. grade. Like no, regular grade works too. It's 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 fine oh. because it's well constrained. Well, what I was gonna the main thing was what size. I think because I was looking at different numbers. I think it's one inch documentation. One inch. One inch bolts, yeah. Okay. One inch pins. I was wondering if we wanted to go smaller. It'd be a lot cheaper, but yeah. It, um. It, uh, one inch three is... quarter well the thing is that what we did it's kind of legacy because the 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 rings which were the rollers the chain rollers those were very heavy wall pipe which had a basically a one inch inner diameter and that's why we used one inch bolts now you're right yeah. if, if we're gonna go to our own track we can well to our own CNC cutout which right now is you know, there's some risk to that because we don't have the torch table up right now. We don't know if it's working yet. Um, I would say just stick with the one inch. That's okay because those bolts are not lost. They're part of inventory, so okay. they can be <laughs> reused. Uh, I had gone back and edited a bunch of the track parts because I found uh, the rings, uh, the rollers, and all that. Some of those the measurements or the sketches weren't fully constrained on those and there were inconsistent measurements on okay. some of those parts as to that size. So I, I, I finished all the sketches on those so they, they're they constrained and they can okay. be edited to any size if, 
if we ever want to change that. Excellent. And did you make that cutout happen? Um, for the rollers? No, the cutout for, remember, like, I have the C page 10 where the arrow is pointing? Oh, yes, I did that notch. Okay. Yeah, yeah notch. I... Yep, that's good. That's good. So we're pretty good. I mean, hopefully we can get to cut out a couple of sample track pads this, this weekend. That would be really good. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you can, um, so let's coordinate on, on getting those cutting files. Cause definitely, yeah, if you, you know, starting with a sample cutting file and then, um, also to demonstrate the workflow there, we go from, so the, the whole workflow now includes, we got FreeCAD, we extract the, the DXFs from FreeCAD. Then we potentially go to the SVG nest, but if not, we're just going DXF to G code converter within Inkscape. So we wanna, um, if you can look at, I know Inkscape does it. If you can um, document that, that would be good. And then we're running G code in Marlin. So that would be the workflow right now. Okay. Let's um, let's move on. Any other questions on that, Abe, or you're good to go on that? No, I, I think I know uh, okay. what's going on on that. Excellent. Okay. So moving on. So we've been doing some good work on a quick attach. So look at this. This is beautiful. So now we've got actually uh, the male and female part fully done. This is Josh and Roberto. Now this is very good. So yeah. Uh, we can basically take this female part mounted to any implement that we have and then the male part the actual latch mechanism That's all open source now and we can we can build it for the first time We're gonna I think we're gonna just buy these parts here. They, they come as a, like these 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 things Which I have um, which I'm outlining here in blue here uh, this one That you can buy off the shelf for a hundred, what is it, a hundred ninety-five dollars for two of them, so a hundred bucks each. So I think we'll do that for the first one. We just need one of them, one set of those, for the tractor, for per tractor. So we'll get two sets of these. So yeah, that's really good. I mean, this is um, the first open source FreeCAD version of the Bobcat Quick Attach that I've seen. So congratulations, team. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's that's really good. Uh, so now we can actually, like once we build this and open source this fully, we can get all these cutting files so we can be making these ourselves, which would make it very low cost. Okay, so, so far we have one implement for the tractor. On page one you've got, you've got the bucket, which is ready. I mean, that's, that bucket is actually technically correct to be, to be fabricated. And the second thing that we're working on, so I asked Josh to work on, on a vibratory trencher. So it turns out we're gonna have to trench a, a line, about a thousand feet of line to the micro CD home from one of the older homes as backup power, like a basically trickle charge backup power for the house, which is now fully off grid. And that's actually operating fully off grid right now. Um, we wanna have backup power because we're gonna be testing and, and pushing the limits of that system with a very small battery bank. But anyway, we, we, we're gonna do a thousand feet of trenching uh, as soon as we get this thing done. So hopefully use the micro track and this vibratory trencher to do that. So basically what it is is, um, is an eccentric motor that basically shakes the whole thing up and down. And uh, it's a blade, it's, a, it's like a plow, and you insert a, a wire, wire behind that. We're gonna run a wire line for a thousand feet. Um, Josh, any comments on that? So actually Josh and and Lex are going to be making it to this workshop, so we're going to have both of them, both people from our team, add the tractor builds. Josh? Cool, yeah, so, um, yeah, I just kind of threw together a, a sketch of at least how it works and uh, kind of what we'll be thinking. Um, yeah. This is kind of a nice part. It's like a good portion of the components are just like kind of two and a half D parts, you know, flat um, cutouts, so... Mm -hmm. Again, something that CNC torch table would be really great for, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can see I kind of threw I kind of found some pictures of what you're talking about. I found some videos. I didn't put those. They're in. I think they're in the working doc. If not, they're on my my log. But 
yeah, I, I didn't realize how vib- vibratory plows are like really cool. And yeah. the yeah. nice thing about them versus like a trencher is they don't leave it like they leave like just very minimal scar across the land. So you can do this for like it just pulls a pipe through the underground and it'll be very like ten inches down. Yeah. And the nice thing is you can also then attach different uh, sized plows. So you could have a deeper one or a sh- shallower one. So I think kind of the standard was like twelve and eighteen inch deep ones. Yeah. So this isn't the best picture of the actual implement. There's another good one. Yeah. Um, Look at Josh Log. He's got good videos on there. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you guys are curious about how that works, it's, it's pretty cool on there. But um, you can see on my on the sketch here, um, it's that I just kind of whipped up the. Here, actually, can I share my screen real quick? And I'll yeah. Just, um, yep. Go ahead. see it or yeah okay so yeah so i was i was just playing with a a 2d sketch of this this plate is kind of just a stand-in for our bobcat quick attach on this side um and sorry uh, this sketch so in here you Uh kind of got uh based on, on this, these guys, these are all damp, dampeners, uh, so it's vibrating a whole bunch, and it's actually, it's kind of like an over-constrained five or four bar linkage, so it's not supposed to move, but it's supposed to be able to move just slightly when you've got this gigantic rotating motor, and so it doesn't shake the entire tractor, um, and so this segment right here, would, we would think would just be like, I was thinking, welded or somehow fixed to the actual female part of the uh, implement and then you would take a yeah you basically just have this the rest of this I, almost identical um but yeah i think the the interesting part is going to be these damper dampeners um i'm not a like vibrations expert or anything but that might be something just to check out so i gotta do a little research on, on that but yeah this motor is going to be pretty cool i i haven't been able to find any videos about like what this rotating weight looks like in there or how that works but um, so that'll be really fun to play with but yeah it's just a hydraulic hydraulic motor and and then this blade has like a, a hook at the end of um like this point here and it will just as you're moving the tractor backwards this way it pulls a cable or a wire uh, underground directly yeah this is the very underground so yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool implement, but this will all be static. I know it looks like it kind of wants to be the linkages that are moving, but it's, yeah, it's all just kind of stationary. Again, something I, I just like. I like those 2D sketches out there. This is obviously, you know, I mean, that's got depth to it. You know, these are going to be in the same plane. But I just think they're a really helpful way to visualize things. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if anyone else is, is curious on how to do that, or it's... Um, you know, pretty helpful thing to be able to tweak a dimension and, you know, I want this for a few and then see and take some things around and look at what that looks like. So. Wait, how are you, how are you doing that right now? You're, you're basically in Sketcher or how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the Sketcher. I have the Sketch open right now. Yeah. So and you're just moving things around. with 10, 10 degrees of freedom. So, you know, I can, I can drag this and say, what would look, what this look like if this was okay. out here? this to be a huge blade or something right yeah um, but i think this is a really powerful tool for you know um, i've seen we kind of do some stuff in google docs right uh, similar but i was thinking you know it might be more powerful there's you know sketcher is a really good tool and you can actually throw in some dimensions and give a like at least a concept idea yeah uh, pretty quickly yeah. and uh, yeah so i think that's a, it's a nice you know, powerful tool yeah. Especially if you've got a, you know, a part like this, which is two and a half D, you know, you can approximate the motor just like lives there. Yeah. If you've got one motion in kind of a, you know, one plane, it's really powerful for that. And you can actually do, I don't know how how it goes in, um, in 
pre-CAD, but I know you can do 3D sketches that are um, kind of cool. So that's just a little bit harder to, to get your mind around is, is sketching in 3D is a little bit uh, more of a brain bender. But yeah. Yeah. Um, on, on notes with that, I just, um, we can talk about this after, but it uh, looks like we're kind of getting to the end of this stuff here. I was thinking, um, you know, just maybe putting together a uh, kind of, list or group of um kind of some pre-cad or cad best practices for people that are kind of new uh -huh. stuff might be a valuable thing um i just wanted to see if that was you know worth spending some time well, on if you get would be helpful to you or would be helpful to future people um, well of I course just don't know yeah. what everyone's background is um, no i mean we, we assume that we have new people coming in all the time so what do we have? I mean, that's. I think we have. What do we have on FreeCAD 101 right now? I think we have a page called. Let's see. FreeCAD 101 should have some best practices stuff. Um, so I, I would say for the best practices, go to the FreeCAD 101 page, and do that there. Um, so there's basically a bunch of instructionals on that page, but you know, like for example, a good instructional would be one to show. Okay, here's how you do the initial exploration of range of motion and things like that using FreeCAD sketches. That would be a nice one to have as well, so that people are more yeah. more prepared to do that. Yeah. So I mean, definitely feel free to do that. Um, yeah. And just to I was um, just thinking because there's there's some some kind of simple stuff that like you know they're not really like making doesn't make uh, FreeCAD work a certain way, uh, better or worse. It just kind of helps the modeling concepts uh, come along. Like, you know, uh, making sure something's kind of centered on the origin if you're going to be able to... And then you can use the XY plane to kind of mirror something later on versus having to, like, then create new construction geometry. And yeah, it, it kind of helps to, to just kind of have some of those... those Absolutely. Of, of thinking there that I, I think would be nice to just have, like, a... Yeah, Just a few I think, uh, you know, like I think a video on that would be good where you pack all those different things in there. Um, but yeah, that's that would be definitely good. Yeah. good can, I, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just I would like to uh, propose a different uh, uh, strategies instead of uh, having videos or documentation is just pick out some of the more complicated or the uh, the more interesting uh parts or models and then uh, annotate them inside the, the pre-cad itself that way you get like a living document as opposed to you know distilling uh you know something at a, at a point in time and then having it be old if you if you pick out some models that you'll always maintain and kind of keep up to standard then you can always point somebody and say hey look at this one it has you know a, a, all of the kind of variety of things you can do in pre-cad and it's this is the current state of the art uh, and that way the document gets up there, the, the FreeCAD model gets updated itself, so you kind of get, kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that would be good. one other way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And document whichever easy, way you, know, you can. You can just have a package of some parts that you throw, um, throw at someone and say, here, you know, if you're curious, like, go play with these, and, you know, maybe the conversion, or you can even have that in, incorporate it into, a, you know, FreeCAD advanced test or something. Yeah, because yeah, I know there's no there's notes, but no, I mean I haven't seen any notes or anything like that in or annotations in any of the models that have been done. Uh, so that that might be something to explore. Yeah. Uh, to use. The, yeah, but how do you do annotations in FreeCAD? There, what do you mean by that? Uh, I saw there was something about that in FreeCAD. I haven't seen it. Haven't so watched. yeah, if we if we do that, that's news to me. But yeah, I mean. There's many features in FreeCAD that we don't know about, so if it's there, we should learn how to use that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'll check that out. That sounds interesting. Is it at least, yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Really powerful. Okay, so just uh, more notes on the trencher thing. I, I can show you a basic diagram like this. This shaker thing. I mean, this is what we did in uh, in a CEB press for the hopper shaker. It's the same thing. You got a motor. A coupler, a shaft supported by two bearings, and an eccentric weight. That's all it is. That's the vibrator mechanism, and and just that weight would be maybe like uh, five pounds, like five to ten pounds, spinning in that spinning at 600 RPM or about about 600 RPM, 
and that's going to be a very significant shake. Um, that's that's probably what we want. So something on order of five to ten pounds, and we can actually experiment with that. What makes it work the best? And the way you don't break the motor shaft is if you support that on bearings. So what I would suggest there is simply one inch bearings and one inch shaft to to make that happen. And just to address uh, also the question, let's see, I'm sharing my screen still, yeah. Uh, to address the question of, of the isolating vibration from the rest of the machine, well, I would say that, so you want to have a raising up and down mechanism, which we already have, which is the, in the form of the loader. So you don't need that separate cylinder. So once you mount this, I mean, it could be as simple as the linkage. So let me uh, point to the linkage. Uh, the linkage there, that's how you attach to the actual uh, quick attach. So you got your Bobcat quick attach. Yeah, just like you have it there. And if those points are just pinned or loose, that means the, the trencher can move up and down very, very slightly. Now I can tell you from seeing these in action that you can hardly see the vibratory motion because it's so fast. So because the tractor is much more heavy all the, uh, probably most of the motion is going to remain within the actual implement itself so you have to get it in a sweet spot where it's shaking at such a speed that the tractor is not even feeling it but for now just do what you have basically two two loose pins where the assembly can pretty much like rotate down just uh, hang downwards a little bit so when you start it kind of droops down a little bit and uh, it has that little bit of degree of freedom so it can bounce up and down a little bit. And I'm not even sure how critical at all that freedom of motion there is because I think we could, because the tractor is so much more heavy than the implement, I'm not sure it's going to completely matter. But um, we can, you know, we can experiment with that. I mean, the simplest version is where you don't, where you just have a stiff connection. And, well, no, no, actually check this out. You can have... Actually, that's a, I take that back. It's all, we already have the dampening mechanism built into the loader. Because, for example, we can, we can put the loader arms on float. In other words, the loader arms can, can uh, move up and down already. Uh, if you have a, valve, a float valve, meaning you put it in a position where the, where the loader is pretty much hanging freely. And that's the kind of valve we want to use for the loaders. So you don't have to worry about that dampening mechanism. It's already built into the loader arms of the tractor. So you can do a stiff connection and then, um, yeah, the stiff connection is fine because you have already two, two degrees of motion. One is the up and down lift of the loader and two is the curl of the bucket of the bucket cylinder itself. So we're all set on that. So therefore this becomes very simple, a stiff mechanism, just a basic vibrator and, um, and the, the shank that goes into the ground. Yeah. So, does that make sense? Yeah, so, I think for the, the freedom of motion, yeah. it, it's, it's really more to prevent transmitting vibrations up to the rest of the, like, I, I think they're, they're looking, you know, I don't know how, how much we care, but, you know, you're going to fatigue your, your loader arms, and lots of other components on there are going to get a lot more wear than is necessary. Yeah. I think that's the idea, especially when you know you're you're designing something to shake around a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I like the that we can get that um, that motion. I'm not sure. So, when you're talking about float, um, what exactly are you? Okay, doing? there's a valve. There's a valve. Okay. You can get hydraulic valves that are called float valves, meaning that the pressure that there is no pressure. Basically, the wherever that loader is that loader can move up and down freely. In other words, the shank will go in the ground, the loader will bottom out, and there is, it's not in a locked position, it, it can go move up and down, in other words, to relieve the vibration. So what you're saying, that's, I mean, that's what I mean. Um, does that make sense or no? It means the, there is no yeah, force, think, it just can go up and down loosely. Is, don't you need to have, like, applied down, downward force? Like, I think... The vibratory mechanism is just like breaking the equilibrium, but I think you're pressing down with like. Uh, big depends. I mean, it really depends on a lot of things. If you want, 
depends how heavy this thing is. If that thing is like a hundred or, well, it's probably going to be probably around 200 pounds or so. You can, uh, it probably, one, one way you can do it is you can, you can use the downward force of the loader arms to push it in. But then from that point, it might go by itself. So, so you can have it in both, both modes, but I would, I would try the first thing I would try is given that the, the float mode of the valve, that's, that's just an extra thing. You have that there already. So we can do the downward pressure to get it into the ground and then put it on float operation and see if that works. Otherwise don't keep it on float, keep it under the sub in a position where, where it's underground. I mean, I think in iterative prototyping, we want to do like the simplest thing first. So do the do that simple thing. We can always add the 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 anti vibration mechanism later as a module. That means just you know putting adding the extra arms on it. But for now, like I I would just try the simplest thing and and do it in steps. So maybe module one would be okay. We got the stiff connection, and then we're relying on a float mechanism of the loader. Uh, second iteration would be to to go from there. Because I mean, that, I mean that's how iterative development works. You can't, you know, you don't necessarily want to do everything in one step. You can do it in phases, so that you test one step at a time. Like we might find out that it's perfectly access acceptable to do that in our case because we're already mounted on a loader and such and such. Here, if you have a dedicated machine like this, I don't know if that's a ditch witch or whatever that is, you know, it might be might be different. So. So I would say try try the simplest thing first and then go from there in the modular approach. Uh, but basically each part is a module, like the vibrator mechanism, that's a module. The arms would be a module. So we can do, do our normal module-based approach where we build in all these modules as needed. Because the, the first thing I want to do is not build it in if it's not necessary for the particular application in our case. Um, and then make it make it so flexible that we can make additions as needed. I get you. I I was just uh, curious about how that flo float worked, and yeah, I agree. Yeah, Google yeah. Google float valve. Um, see see what you I'll can find. Maybe maybe teach the rest of us too. And we can, and we can talk about it. Um, yeah. You know, okay. Everyone's interested in. Yeah, well, that yeah. sounds good. I mean, I think the the focus right now would be, I mean, there's definite on module based design. You've got the shank module, you've got the vibrator module, and then the attachment. Uh, we can kind of go at it in a modular way to do that. Yeah, without making it too complex. Okay, so let's go back to the, uh, the, the some of the priorities, the, the torch table. Uh, let's see. Roberto, do you have any updates on the... Um, so on the, the quick attach plates, I mean, I think we're pretty good on those. Uh, I think that's that's pretty well done. Yeah, the thing to do. Was fun. Yeah. Uh, for those, I got to use the the new little. I haven't played with the sheet metal stuff in Foodcat, but that was uh, um, got to use that workbench and it worked out really well. So. Oh wow, wow, yeah. I haven't haven't used the sheet metal workbench. So bending things in sheet metal. Yeah, there's only like three options in it right now, but um, yeah, if you go through that part, you can kind of click through and see, um, you know. Where I started, that first extrude one is all. That was all just made in the, the sheet metal workbench. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but it was. Yeah, I, I think the the cool part is that then there's like a flatten. Um, that, you know, ideally, if we were looking at doing any more sheet metal design and having a CNC torch table, um, that allows you to and model something as you would actually like it and then flatten it, and then you uh -huh. can send it off to your uh flatten it meaning you you make a model and then it it lets it uh, it does what and then yeah it makes a flat pattern out of that so and then you assume that the 3d is welded together uh yeah exactly so i i haven't played a ton with it and i i've done this in other cad systems but yeah. uh cool. so it just um, that's that's really so useful, cool, yeah. 
that would be quite useful for us for CNC cutting things. So we should get more familiar with that workbench. Um, as many, yeah, we've got many things to learn. Okay, but let's go back now to um, to task division. So so we've got uh, Josh, we've got Vibratory Plow Trencher. And uh, yeah, let's see how quickly we can get that done in a basic way. Um, let's see. So let's talk about Roberto. You did the the tooth bar bucket. What I'd like to ask you is uh, attach the quick attach to the bucket. Um, does that make sense? And then actually put it on a micro track for micro track. So that means you're going to have to shrink down. Shrink the quick attach to 41 inches, because that's the width of the, the thing, width of our tractor. And I think what we can do is when we do the quick attach male part, we can probably use the same type, same identical one for the tractor. Goal would be to use the same one for the tractor as micro tractor. I don't know if that's possible. We might have to widen it out for the big tractor. Okay, Roberto, does that make sense to attach the bucket to it and then put it on micro track with the actual accurate quick attach plate? So basically, add the accurate quick attach plate to the current micro track. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. All right, uh, that should be pretty fast. I think we should give you something else too. Um, what else is there to do? So we've got Abe working on the actual getting the, the cutting files, which is good. Um, we got Oliver on the team here too today, right? So, so Oliver, uh, yeah, I do want to. So we're gonna be working on the the height controller. So I'll consult with you on a height controller. Um, Oliver, are you also available to do any other design work, or or is your time time pretty tight right now? I'm a little bit short the next few days because. Um, um, I have to prepare a workshop which will take place in Hamburg where we build uh, something from the Libero Solar project and I have to produce uh -huh. many parts until then. Uh, if it can be scheduled a little bit longer, then... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just ask you a few questions. I think I'm, I'm right now, yeah. like, uh, just to check in where we are on the controller, but if you look yeah. at my screen here, um, so that's it. I mean, all I got to do is plug in power and then so the controller has a, its own stepper driver on it correct and you just plug no wait no 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 it's going to an external driver correct yeah, to a tb yes 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 so we got yes. the the outlets here the, these ones on top here that are to the stepper driver but all i do is plug in power plug in yes. the stepper driver and the knob and my little knob I can control the torch up and down. Is that correct? Um, yes. That That's should it. should be the case. And this is all descriptive in the uh, uh, project page of, of that thing. How to, how to, which has to be plugged in where. And uh, that was what, what I did a few weeks ago. Yep. The documentation of it. Yep, I um, saw. Maybe you should. You should care about if you plug give the give the main power supply. This is a plug which is similar or the same like a normal ramps, but on normal ramps you have um, 
two times 12 volt and this has uh, 5 volt so um, make sure that you have the right volt yeah exactly on this Phoenix connector how it's yeah. called do and, I need an external uh, 5 volt supply otherwise you would blow the you would blow the AD uh, right uh, so I need both two power supplies one is 12 volts and one is 5 volts this is what is on a normal ramps supply but here you need only five volts because, oh here you need um, just five volts five okay volt line okay goes directly to the tb 6600 that that's the safer way like this yeah. so but you have to make sure that the, that here on the phoenix on the green phoenix connector you only have five volts okay Okay. That's the most important point, and everything else is uh, written in the documentation. When when does does the um, event place take place? Uh, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. We're going to be plugging this 14. in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and um, I've made. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, you wanted to say something else? No. No. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, I've made I've made a, a little video that is um, what what you asked to to what shows how the source code uh, is yep. deployed into KiCad, and um, I've uploaded it on YouTube, and uh, it's maybe not the best media show I've ever produced, <laughs> and especially it has a little bit poor sound quality, but uh, be grateful with me because that's the first video I made with direct audio speed. Normally, I, I do scripted texts uh, onto it, so it was my first time. I, I made it a little bit in a hurry, but uh -huh. however, this uh, shows a little bit uh, yeah, from, the, from the keycap side, the, the, the um, PCB and yeah, how it looks. I hope this can be useful for your event. Thank you. Are you, are you going to be available that for uh, actually to chime in on on a conference call with us during that workshop, or or no? Yeah, uh, when exactly is the time? Well, it's going to be, if we do that, it would be like 11 a.m. our time, we'd, where we would do maybe like noon time our time. Here, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. I, I will be available here on, on Jitsi around that time. Excellent, but, excellent. So, because part of the workshop was to introduce people both to FreeCAD and KeyCAD, because KeyCAD is what's used to design the board like the controller board so we want to teach people both the FreeCAD and key keycad skills uh as part of this workshop since we've got both electronics and the mechanical side um and yeah we got to learn all that stuff and learn how to modify these these boards as well very good thank you and we're going to have another guy um uh, also do a tutorial on keycad the our cnc C circuit mill guy Shane, he's. I'm hoping that he will pipe in for another tutorial, more just on the basics of KiCad, so because he he knows that pretty well, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna be able to do that. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So Oliver, height controller. That's yeah. yeah that's well um, documented. Thank you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not very good in KiCad. I'm still also a novice guy on that. Yeah. So um, don't expect me to make too good tutorial on KiCad itself, but no. uh, I, I can, of course, uh, answer uh, questions or s tell something about, yeah. the, about that PCB and how it works and what it should do and something Yeah, like excellent, excellent. And that's why we'll have Shane, in which case you should participate in that conference call as well uh, during the workshop. Okay, remotely. All right, so let's keep moving on. Thank you. Um, on um, yeah, let me just think. Roberto with the bucket. The next, th just skipping back to just a little more. Uh, well, maybe maybe Roberto, maybe we can um, have you jump in on some of the CNC torch table stuff with Ahmed and Lex, myself, and you. So let's look at in detail what the outstanding tasks for the CNC torch table are. Um, Okay, so Lex, what's the latest on the the task list? So if you go to slide number four, click on the working document, and we're working on some of those tasks there. 
Oh, what happened to that working dock? Change that. Okay, let me uh, change that working dock there. The dev team one or uh, the D3D torch table one? Torch table. Okay. Okay, you should be able to click on that working document there on slide number four as far as where we are on this on this torch table so the latest was we were reworking some of the details of the parts and there is a list of a few changes and maybe we can divvy that up between everybody so we have this thing completely done but the number one thing that needs to be done immediately because I gotta print some of these parts is the the actual uh, carriage holder I think the widening of the hole and making it six inches wide instead of 5.9 inches like is in this list okay so we'll go to that list um, yeah so what we're doing is once again this that's our carriage with a small 3d printed piece for the bushings but then we got to make a couple of modifications uh, so Lex you've done the could you, uh, sorry, could you share your screen uh, ah, okay Yep, and the working document is, uh, I just pasted it in, for that's the torch table if you haven't accessed that. So, so yeah, so that's the holder, the bearing holder. Uh, we've got the, the pulley drawn up. Now, Ahmed, where'd you pull that pulley diagram from? You found it online somewhere, but uh, do you have a link for that? Can you maybe put that in? Yeah, see if you can um, put a link to that pulley. But we need to make one change, make the carriage 3D printed piece 6 inches long instead of 5.9 inches. The carriage metal, the metal pieces should be a quarter inch thick. And widen the metal piece to 6 inches. Those are small items. Uh, next. I'll go through this. So assemble the carriage and motor piece together. So basically when you do the one axis bolted to the other, we want to draw up the CAD for that. Now we're kind of stuck on the CAD until we update the update the metal pieces and make remake the sandwich. Basically remaking this in, sli in a slide number two, we got to remake that to have the appropriate metal thickness and just a little bit of the updates. But after that, we can do go to slide three there, where we actually make this happen in, in FreeCAD. Um, so, yeah, I talked about, uh, so just in detail, assemble carriage and motor piece together. We have to determine exactly what the bolt lengths are to make it work because I got to order those bolts like today or tomorrow. So they're in, in time. But basically we know we can we know kind of that distance there. I can even guess because we will make washers happen underneath the bolt heads so that we get the correct space. Um, yeah, we want we also want to do quarter inch metal pieces around the motor piece as well. Uh, the metal sandwich around that which is not super critical right now so it's not not a priority um, not exactly a priority because that's something we can retrofit over the the motor piece once we have the motor w once we need a stronger application so I'm gonna say temporarily put a strike through through that because that's not critical for this weekend because the torch table is going to move relatively slowly we're not going to need need that particular part the, the number three here um now i put in numbers in item number four i put modify the motor and carriage piece to use with 1.05 diameter rods the only thing that's already covered on the last page where we just got to widen out the bearing holders. That's it. Yeah. Because 1.05 inches is very close to 1 inch, the, the same piece pretty much works for both. Um, minus the detail on the bushings. Okay, let's look at uh, page 4. 
Yeah. No, that's not important. I, I'm going to just cross out this whole page here. Uh, just cross that out for now. This one... I mean, we want to draw up this thing. Like, we want to get a final CAD, like on page number five. That's going to be the final CAD. But let's let's look at the the little bit of detail. There's going to be a, a torch that's mounted, like right here in the middle, right? So let me just try to expand that a little bit. So there's going to be a torch, like like you saw on uh, within our working document. This torch and that torch holder, they're going to be in between two axes, the two axes on the um, Let's label the axes here. This is, we call this the X. This direction is X. Because that's like when you're facing it, that's the way we're facing. Uh, so hey, we Marshall, call that... I have a question about that. Is that a sandwich or is that one piece? Because it looks like the torch table fits completely inside of the groove in that holder. Oh, uh, that's, that's a, the, what I've shown is one half of the sandwich. Um, there's the second half because what you want to do is have it so this is what I'm drawing up right now right now that sandwich is going to be between the carriages on the on the x-axis so you see the carriage there uh, that thing now nah. what I'm drawing there is the x carriage be between that x carriage is the torch holder so, in other words, this space is probably just a little more, like maybe this this much. I'm going to draw a red circle for the torch itself here. So the torch is going to be right there. So that's where the torch is. You're looking from the top. So it's suspended on two sides, and that makes for a very stable structure. Okay? But that's going to be riding between two carriages, and... Well, remember there's a Z motion, so that doesn't show the full detail. The full detail is going to be the fact that there's also a Z axis if you look from the top. So we need to allow space for the Z axis in there. Um, so what's going to happen... Is, let's draw the little... I'm going to zoom in on that. The Z axis is going to be the 5 16 rod axis here, riding on the top of the big rods. Does that make sense now? So what, what I draw drew right now in purple is the 5 16 axis. Does that make sense or no? Are you talking about the, the thinner pieces, the ones that are marked small in the library catalog? Or? Uh, look at slide number five. The, the 5 and 16 axis is the same axis as on, on, the, on the 3D printers. The big torch table axis is 1 inch axis. Okay. Right? So the big carriages, which we just talked about right now in slides 1 and 2, the big carriage, that's the one where, that's the 1 inch right here. Right? one inch so this in other words let me show you the um, if we go to the d3d cnc torch table page you have a picture of the big axis with a small axis on top on facebook you see that that's exactly what we're doing for the z-axis do you see that yep so yep. that's the z-axis uh going up and down now where is the torch if the middle piece is, is attached, that means the actual torch head is going to be attached to the bottom piece if that's the way we're attaching. Uh, so basically the motor's on top and then let me let me get a little s screenshot of that and uh, I'll Are you saying I'll the diagram. torch head or the torch holder? Because I thought the torch head is supposed to be way, be way below everything. Right, the, so the, exactly, yeah. exactly. The, the holder. Okay. Yep. So let me uh, paste this into the document and let's annotate it to see what exactly we have to do from here. So um, if we got this. Let me actually start the next page. Slide, duplicate, slide. 
Um, and I'm going to go back to, so in this page, we know that that's how the z-axis looks. Uh, now, what's the detail on the y-axis? So on the y-axis, we're going to have two carriages here, one here and another here. Now, why do you want to have two carriages? Because it leaves you room to adjust for the exact thickness of the overall assembly with z-axis plus torch holder. Another word, does that make sense? In other words, that distance that I'm drawing right now needs to be exact. So in order to make that distance exact, we can use this spacing here between the y-axis. In other words, the, the y-axis spacing is adjustable. So you don't have to worry about the precise bolt hole location within the metal pieces. That is going to be very hard to do until we have the final proven design. For this first build, you want to make that adjustable so it's, this is, thing is easy to assemble. So in other words, the adjustment is there. Adjustment for torch head spacing is here. Does that make sense or no? Yeah, are you thinking of just having the metal piece have a, uh, instead of a hole, it'll be like a groove and then you can slide it? Is that what you're thinking? or? No, I'm thinking right now we've got, we don't have a torch table to cut with, so we're going to drill things. We're going to drill holes. Okay. So if we've got holes drilled, that means that hole, those holes have to be in exact positions. We can't really do slots. If we could do slots, we can do like a long, long extended piece. But the thing is, uh, for modular design too, it's it's good to use these these uh, two carriages here. Um, so the carriages, I'm gonna color them all in green. The the one inch carriages are all green. All right. Let's so see how what, do you make it adjustable then if you, if you can't do the slots on the middle? Because that spacing, you see the space, spacing there? You can adjust that yeah. to be bigger or yeah, smaller. Yeah, I understand, I understand the reason I'm saying how, how would it be designed then to, to, to make it adjustable without putting slots in the middle? Well, okay, so... Or what, what are you thinking? How do you make it adjustable? Okay, so let's, yeah, let's clarify that. Well, because the, these are free sliding on axis. Okay. So you can slide oh, so you're them. you're just saying they're not even connected, so that's the no. adjustable part. They're right, not they're connected. not connected. Okay. okay, all right, so then there's nothing to do then, I mean, in terms of right. that stuff. Okay. If, yeah, if we do that, that means we don't have to design a long carriage. Okay. And we're done with the short carriages that we already have. If you notice in the part library, there was a long metal piece and a short metal piece. We don't need that long metal piece anymore. That's that's not good for what we want to do. It's it's more custom work. Like until we get everything nailed out, we should keep to the small carriage. And in fact, even in the final version, I would keep it to the single small carriage because we're minimizing part count. And moreover, that's exactly what we did in a CNC circuit mill. We did exactly what you see here. We took two independent axes on the Y because we needed that space to be adjustable for the router, we left it as exactly like here without having to make a custom part. So this saves you from making a whole bunch of custom parts, which is a good idea altogether. So, uh, and then you can use these, these same parts for whatever tool head you have. You don't have to have a, have a number of different length carriages to accommodate different tools. This allows you to accommodate many different tools. So that's that's a good way so to are go. You sure it's, are you sure it's going to work without having some way to connect those two pieces? Yes, we already did it on a on a CNC circuit mill. It works oh, well. Okay. All you do is you attach the belt. So I mean, okay, the technicalities are. That's actually a good question. I mean, the technicality is that the belt attaches. Um, let me show you the belt attachment position. It attaches similarly to what you have if you had a single carriage, but the belt is basically pinned in like there with the black dot there, it's pinned there and the belt is pinned on the other side here. And in between, that belt is just tra traveling through the carriages and, and so forth. So the so belt like, pinning so the is belt on those... Is what's keeping them together? Or, okay, Say it again? I'm thinking, with, with, since it, maybe it works on a smaller scale, but on a larger scale with, with heavier things... No, no. If it, those two 
carriage pieces aren't somehow attached. No, no, uh, the way, the, the way the, sorry, the way the belt is tensioned, no, I hear your point. You think that it might, might be uh, an issue because they're not attached, but what, what, the way it works there is that belt is still tight around there. So it still works of, because of the way that the belt is attached, it keeps, let me see, let me see if I can explain it. Um, in fact, if I can draw the belt for you right here. So say the belt is, belt would go like this. Um, and this belt goes all the way through and it's pinned like this. It's kind of, it's kind of like this. That's the belt pattern. Like both the belts stick out of one side, but, um, if you have the other side of the y-axis on the other side of the torch table and the precise spacing as determined by the mounting of the torch, all that spacing is maintained in a proper way. At least we didn't see any issues. Like, I, I kind of see what you're saying, but in a circuit mill, that worked out well because the way things end up tensioning themselves in the system. So... Um, I think that's that's uh, perfectly fine there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're talking here now about five feet by ten feet, so you know it, it is a big distance. But I do believe it all works out because if you think about it, if you pull, okay, think about it this way. I think I got a good explanation. If you pinch it, so so like for example, if you pinch, let me put a red arrow for. Uh, like say you pinch it where the red arrow is, right? Because that's when you tension the belt, that's what wants to happen. It tends to get pinched. Well, you cannot pinch it if the opposite side, so let me put the arrow there, if that side is also pinched, then both sides are stable. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I mean, it, you're going to have some vibration and that's going to make it wobble. I'm thinking, you know, one side is going to get uh, cl close up and the other one's going to open up and, and it'll kind of, uh, you know, go from one to the other like a seesaw and then eventually, you know, it'll start to, to uh, well, I don't know, maybe it won't. I don't know, it just that, okay. it seems like one possibility. Okay, the answer to your question is clear based on the fact that we have stepper motors on each side. So I'm now drawing in the motor pieces. So those are where the motor pieces are. The case that you just said would happen if you did not have stiff holding motors. But the stepper motors that we use hold the entire structure stiff whenever they're on. So everything moves absolutely in unison as a stiff structure. So And the belt is stiff? Yep. Everything is tensioned here. So yeah, that that's uh, all your issues are addressed in the way this, this whole thing works. Yeah. And we've seen that, so because I mean, we already ran this table uh, on a five by ten foot level. We ran it just with one axis on the X, which had issues. We didn't have the right plates. We we had a bunch of little details that just simply weren't weren't done to spec. So uh, we're basically building upon it. But the main thing that got us last time was the thing about the bushings pinching on the axis, which made this hard to move. So, and I tested this, basically when you loosen the bushings by making the hole, basic, basically the space, the holder for the bushings a little larger, that's what solves it. And that is um, the thing I mentioned in a main work document, but I'm going to emphasize that here. So I'm going to, so since the pulley is good, uh, I'm going to cross that off and... Um, Number one thing, enlarge the bushing holders by one sixteenth of an inch. So make the diameter of those holes one sixteenth inch larger. That's the f absolute first thing we got to do. And from then, like, like basically, I want to enlarge that and print all the new pieces. So that's the first thing we have to do. That's the thing I mentioned in the main work doc. 
So with that said, how do we divvy up the tasks here? Uh, Lex and Ahmed, um, let's see what we can do. So one person maybe, I mean, you know, just divvy up. These are all the tasks on the uh, on a plate before us. The, the main question is, where are those files? Uh, go to the part library. And that's where the files are. But we just basically update those parts. And once those parts are updated, we can actually put together the, the total structure of the torch table. We do also have the, the torch holder already there. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, Marty, I, I have sent you a file uh, for one of my drawings, but uh, it's totally completed based on double belt. Okay, you got it? Where Where is that? Where do we find that? I didn't uh, push it here right now. Uh, I just, I was outside and I came just for one hour uh, and then I'll put it after the meeting right now and push it there. Uh, but are you sure that we'll go through double belt? Is it confirmed or not? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so here's the idea. Uh, are you asking whether we're going to use the double belt? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Confirm. Yes, the answer is yes for the y-axis. On the x-axis, we actually don't need it because we're carrying less weight. So so let me just actually write that in here because that's a, that's a point we want to note. The y-axis gets double belt because it's carrying both the y and x-axis. So y-axis gets double belt. And And then the x-axis has single belt because there's two x-axes. So you got plenty of strength there and you're carrying less weight. Which works out well. Um, does that make sense? Because you're carrying more both the x and y axes with the y? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you, you totally don't need it on... Um, on the x-axis, that would be overkill. Um, yes, it's just I need to confirm it finally. Yep. To make sure. So, okay, but Ahmed, we we uh, we have this list of updates to do here, right? Like, are, did you do some of these updates already? You're saying? Or? Because there's these minor what updates. I did is, is what I'm oh, no, I didn't make it. I make well, just what I have sent it to you from uh, uh, two days before. And I'm going to, to make the other one, uh, just to stop to confirm uh, okay. the double belt or not, only. Yeah. And then go through it again. Okay. okay. So so how do we divide this up? So so uh, extending the length just by a little bit and widening the hole. Who has time to do that ASAP? Um, does anyone uh, have time to work on it today? Because, I mean, I... I, c I could work on it today. I, I mean, I basically got to get that file starting to print. So... Uh, today, uh, it's, it's now, it's, uh, it's about 10 o'clock. Uh, okay. Here. How about Lex? Lex um, yeah, I could probably do it uh, later today. Um, I guess one question is, yeah. is it uh, for all of the parts that have to have it increased or just... Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's only two parts, which is the motor piece and the carriage piece. And it's the same part for both the X and the, uh, the Y axis, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Okay, that's good. Because you know what? Like when we have... Um, so where we're going to have basically a stepper motor. Let me draw in a stepper motor. Yeah, but the, the short answer is yes to that, the, just those two pieces. Um, so the way we're going to have the stepper motors, I'll draw them as black squares here. Um that's the little stepper motors we have. And we're using the same ones as on, um, on a 3D printer. And they work well uh, to move the entire thing. So there's one there. Uh, 
Uh, there's another one here. So those two are there. And that's why you just need the motor piece and the carriage pieces here. Very simple. And then there's two more there. Uh, in so the, that's uh, parts catalog. There's also a uh, carriage interface small. Do you know what that's for? In the uh, part library, let me yeah. see. Carriage interface. Yeah, that's wait. What is that? I don't know. I think that's mislabeled. Uh, who did that? That's not a carriage. That's the that's the motor piece. No, that's uh. There's also, there's also a motor interface. Wait, right what is that? that? I don't know what that is. Who, who did that? That's Emmanuel. Carriage? Who does that one? Carriage. Maybe that's the Z, huh. the up and down? No, the no, they're all the same. Everything is the same. I really don't know. We have to move that. Let's move that down. I don't know what that is. Because you see the page, the carriage metal piece plate double, get rid of that. Okay. And get rid of all those double modules for the reasons that we discussed okay. just before. So we can just okay. move those down, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the torch handle, which is the actual, we actually catted up that torch, that's good. And the torch holder, those are both good. We can use those. And that's what's going to fit between the the long axes. Now, just for the sake of, um, you know, just having a better CAD drawing, since the 5 by 10, I mean, it gets really, really long on a 10 foot side, we can do one rendering that's just 5 by 5 feet, just to make it better visible on a screen, because 5 by 10, it's almost hard to see. So we can do, we can do like a 5 by 5 version, because it shows, that shows all the correct details. Uh, we don't have to make that axis in a CAD 10 feet as uh, that will be just hard to look at on a screen. Yeah. Um, so, let's see, Lex, if you can do that t later today, that would be great. Then maybe like tonight I'll start printing the parts. And then, let's see, Roberto, you got the bucket, so we'll, we'll talk to you after, after you got the... Email me as soon as you have the bucket, um, tooth bar bucket mounted properly with the, with a quick attach plate onto micro track, and then we'll go from there, uh, onto any more tasks. Does that sound good? Um, I have a question about the. Yep. How is the, um, the quick attach uh, male plate? Is, how is it is going to, to fit to the micro track yeah yeah the way uh, mm-hmm let's take a picture of that and take a look at the picture so uh, once you have so this assembly is what you have what we will have to do and I'm gonna draw that in here probably what we have to do is just like they had in the other pictures put it like a bar a tube like a possibly like a four by four inch tube like there and in front of that tube, so yeah, I'm just going to draw this. Are you, are you seeing that on my screen? Yes. Okay, so we've got, we've got the tube there. And somewhere, so that tube, the spacing on that tube has to be exactly such that the loader arms are going to be fitting to it. So so basically that tube, I'm going to draw it from the side. So that tube, let me just draw that. So that tube is going to have to have the mounts with the holes for the, so it's going to have to have like welded pieces to it with a hole. Uh, something to this effect where you're going to have the pinholes for the cylinders. So pinhole here and pinhole here for the this would be the bottom is going to be the arm attachment and the top is going to be the cylinder attachment does that make sense uh, yeah. yep in other words the spacing 
Okay, so that it turns out that these Bobcat quick attaches have these two different hole sets. So we can move the spacing of these quick attaches, the lever parts, in and out to the point that they go through the holes, but they also match up our micro track. Does that make sense? Uh, can you repeat that, please? Yeah. We can space out the distance between... So this, this, this piece with the latch, the distance between those two pieces on the left and right hand side has to be adjusted such that we can mount the arms to those bars that are welded next to the levers. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And probably, uh, in order to make the arms go up and down even, there has to be a cross attachment. But that cross attachment between the arms, so let's take a look at the, the micro track. Um, so I'm going to expand this picture here on the front page. So what we want to do in the micro track in reality is put a reinforcing bar between the arms like where I'm drawing right there we need to put some kind of a welded attachment between the two two arms so that the arms move up and down together and that way you don't need a cross attachment between the quick attach plates does that make sense uh, okay yes yep that's all we need to do So that's, yeah, actually those would be good additions that you can make. And once you have the, okay, so Roberto, what that actually will probably keep you on the micro track uh, now that we're talking about it, because what needs to happen there, once you have the, the crossbar and once you have the exact quick attach, then you can actually attach real cylinders to the top point of the, the quick attach that we just talked about. Um, so, so arm attachment is at the bottom, cylinder attachment is at the top. So it would be good for you to actually start getting an idea of, um, uh, just make up a cylinder and then we'll find a real one that has that according length to make it work. Uh, so the assignment then for you would be to research a little bit. Okay, how do we attach now the cylinder so it actually, and then space the the quick attach such that it fits on our arms exactly. So that's that's the heavy duty work that needs to be done. That's actual design work. We're designing exactly what cylinder we have to use there and how to mount it. Okay, uh, I have a question about the bucket because yep. um, the dimensions that the dimensions I used uh -huh. for that um, were for, um, for were for larger tractors. Yeah. Um, so I I, I already um, made um, a shorter uh, bucket. Okay. So that, um, instead of thirty two inches, it was um, twenty five. And I th I think that. It, it, okay. It's going to fit better to the okay. micro track because the, the, the buckets for the micro tracks are in like, like the Terodingo or or those kind of tractors are are shorter. Okay. Uh, I mean that's a good point. Both of them would work, and the one that you drew al already before that would be more like a carrying bucket. It, it yeah, it's true. It's so big that it's hard to work with. Uh, so you're absolutely right about that. And um, so the shorter one is definitely a good idea. Uh, the one that okay. you did before, yeah, we could have we could have used it, but it would be more for the pun function of carrying things as opposed to digging more aggressively because it's so big. The smaller it is, it's like the the more agile you can be with it. So yeah, but that's great. Let me I'm just pulling up, trying to pull up your document unless I crashed. Okay. Let's see. Am I still good here? All right. Okay, so that's 
So that's the one that's a little shorter, you're saying. It's like 25 inches long. Yep, 22 inches long, yeah. No, that's that's good. That's that's better. Yeah. So now you got to put the quick attach on the back of so probably weld the quick attach to the ba this back vertical. So basically when you when it's when the quick attach is straight up, the bucket will be bent up a little bit like that. That's great. So yeah. Um the only other thing is typically on these buckets um you can also draw one reinforcing half inch bar underneath it for reinforcement. Uh, typically the buckets have maybe like right behind the teeth you can make one half inch bar behind the teeth because uh, that length is gonna be a little wobbly uh, it's very stiff whenever you have like this this piece here that makes it very stiff on the back and everything the weak side right now is the bottom which is very long and flat and that means it wants to bend so the way you prevent it from bending is put in uh, typically I have a bar underneath like uh, that's a detail, but I would suggest a half inch by half inch by four inch bar across the bottom, uh, right behind the teeth would do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, that sounds good. Okay. Yeah, and those are those nice teeth. These teeth work very well. They're very easy to make. That's like a one inch bar, and then sharpened tooth pieces, and that's that digs really well. We we're using that, and that works well. The open source source tooth bar from 2010 or 2009. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see where we're at now. So that's we got the bucket. A lot of work there. Uh, but once we get a geometry right, that's going to be great. Um, uh, also, another question about the female plate. Hmm. Because the. Um, the micro track is is shorter and then the the current dimension now is 45 inches is the current uh, one that you have 45 inches the the current female plate the quick attach yeah yeah so i i just um how, how is how is female. Uh, going to be changed yeah. to adapt to the micro track? Yeah, uh, what I would do is just shorten it on, on e either side. Because you're right, that would stick over the side. So make it just narrow it down enough so that you can still hold it with the with the males. Okay, so I, I will keep the same d dimensions for the holes and the only like to cut uh, the, the center space. Of the plate that's correct yep okay yeah that's exactly right that's all you need to do and uh, for both the live track and micro track optimally we would design it that the micro track implements can still fit on a on a big tractor if the quick attach is spaced accordingly on the big tractor and I don't know if that's physically possible um, if the cab on the th on a big tractor is 36 inches and the loaders are around the cab, basically the loader arms have to be within 42 inches for for that to be possible because the micro track is 42 inches wide. We'll see. We might have to just do d different ones, but uh, yeah, Defin So here's the idea: big tractor implements will definitely fit on micro track, but the other way around may not be. The micro track implements may not fit on a big tractor. In other words, the, the little tractor can carry big implements. Like for example, the wider bucket, you can put that really wide bucket on a micro tractor. And it'll be pretty front heavy at that point, but it's possible. So, so at least there's some interchangeability of implements between the two machines. Yeah, excellent. And I see the annotation ma macro, that is excellent there. That's looking good. Um, I have to take a look at that. And uh, yeah, we're moving forward here. So let's see. Um, roll division. Are we good to go? So Lex, you got plenty to do. Uh, I guess for Ahmed, the idea there would be as soon as we've got all this material drawn up, the next step, yeah, see, uh, see if you can upload what you have and then start working on 
the parts where we assem are actually assembling the whole structure together where we have uh, some of that already like we have the big structure already but that's with the old parts like uh, I mean we've got this final assembly let's see no no we don't we don't have a final assembly we have an old final assembly with old parts so right now we can do uh, like once we get the Lex does the little modifications then um, we can put together the whole torch to table the, the file which I have already uh, I have already drawn it but uh, I don't know what's going on it's not accepted um, so you just uh, if you can do it so it will be easy for me later on. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. What are you asking? Uh, I try to upload the file which I have. Uh -huh. uh, the, 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 the file which uh, which modified with uh, double belt. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Did you send it to me by you... email? <coughs> no, I don't send it. Uh, I, I send it later on. I sent okay. it before, sorry. I, send, I can send it to you now. Okay. So, yeah, I'll take a look at what you have, and and we can see what what will be the best thing to go forward with. But I think that's pretty good. So Roberto, you've got plenty to do. Uh, Lex, you got stuff. Abe, Oliver. Uh, I think we're. Josh too as well. So yeah, I think we're good for now. Uh, let's look at the questions real quick. Would best practices for CAD in the week be helpful for people? Well, absolutely, of course. I mean, it's all about documentation, quality documentation. Changing the motor mount bolt holes to slots horizontal is the only easy way I see to adjust the tension to tension the tracks. Who said that? Was that Abe? That was me, yeah. Um, there's a few details there that haven't been... Uh, finalized on those so um, and also I guess the other question there was oh. I, I see some parts that were uh, were put into the master CAD where like the sprocket is three quarter inch plate because that's what you used before I think yeah. was three quarter inch plates and I yeah. think for this we want to use half inch that I mean if everything is half inch then we just need to adjust all the uh, measurements and thicknesses on everything yeah yeah, stick to the three quarter inch for now, actually, because um, what we have is we have all the tr we actually have the spare tracks from last time, so we can use some of those as well. Um, they'll be they'll be so we don't have to change it. And if it's if it's wide enough for three quarter inch, then it will pretty I think pretty much work with half inch because it's only like a quarter inch off. Um, let's stick with that because we have those parts already on on hand. Uh, so we'll we'll oh, use okay. that. Yeah. Those. Yeah, that's because you disassembled the uh, previous prototype. I guess is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. We can reuse um, those. So the tracks, they need to be for a th three quarter inch thick sprocket. Now, yeah. Let's yeah. See, the sprocket assembly there. I know from the CAD, it looks like it's made maybe with by welding plates on both sides of that sprocket. For the right. tracks to ride on, yeah. Um, so I guess that's plenty strong. But I guess okay. So basically, the rollers. Well, are the rollers? I guess you don't worry about how much them being half inch. There's not too much. They're to okay. There. Um, uh, half inch is okay. good for the rollers, so we can cut them out of half inch steel. Okay. Just the sprocket, which you already have. Okay. So. Yeah, I guess that answers those questions then mm -hmm. I'll just make sure that the track lengths are a little more than uh, three quarter inches wide yeah yeah and uh, you you talked about the tensioning of the tracks well uh, the truth is that on a, on a micro track we have not finished that detail however on a big tractor uh, and I'll just show you that right now there is the Okay, so let's go to the Lifetrack MasterCAD file. Um, I'll show you. But basically, the vertical bars serve as the tensioning mechanism, and I think that's going to work. So let me just uh, open it up for you, just discuss that for a second so everyone is 
all kind of on the same page on that. Okay, so we're opening up the MasterCAD for Life Track. And where is that? Okay, so view. I guess while you're doing that, another question would be okay, since there it you is. have that motor assembly, that drive motor assembly, if that's already pre built, um, I see that the, the length there, I was thinking I was going to adjust that in the CAD because I assumed maybe it was wrong, but actually. It looks like the position of that drive motor assembly, if that's correct, then we're going to have to add some extra plates or washers to adjust the position of that motor uh, in. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be some adjustment have, has to be made. Now, I just want to show you what the. So I did this for the big tractor, but how do you tension the track there? So you have the vertical bars which are triangulated here so we'll, we'll wear, weld like a connection here but look at this the if I hide the tracks hide the tracks see that the motors uh, there's a tube that the motors are attached to that rides up and down and that tube can be tensioned by a bolt, a tensioning bolt. So the basically the whole, the tube just basically rides up and down by a tension bolt, and that tension bolt could be, could be. Um, wait, what is that bar doing there? Yeah, yeah, the tension bolt. So so there's a bit of detail missing here. Uh, let me just hide away this stuff here. Uh, but look at that. Um, if you hide all this stuff, this this crossbar here, this assembly that's where the motors are and then as, if you pull that assembly up that tensions the tracks and I'm hoping that we can use the same mechanism for the micro track so all you would need here is a bolt that tensions this you know have one one turn buckle you know one one turning thing here it could be like a like a bolt that you turn with an impact wrench and then you move one side and the other side so you tension the tracks so that's that's something that could work in this case uh, for both the micro track okay. and the tractor. If it, I guess that doesn't slip, huh? Well, if it's 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 mounted, it's connected with a tensioning one inch threaded rod, uh, which can get. I mean, a one inch rod gets. That's good for like fifty thousand pounds of holding holding weight. So. And if it's grade eight, that's more. So I don't think there's there's that consideration there. Uh, that's plenty of strength to hold the actual tracks up with. You probably need like a thousand, you know, five hundred pounds, maybe, maybe five hundred pounds or three hundred pounds of upward pressure on the tracks, as my guess. But like when whenever you're going over stuff, the t the tracks go over bumps. They put put more tension on. But at most, you'll be putting on as much tension as the weight of the tractor plus peak loads. So if the tractor weighs like, say, 5,000 pounds, peak loads you can say are like 10 times more, 50,000 pounds. Um, so a one inch bolt should be fine for this, this kind of application. Okay, so. One on each the side. Current motor mount plate design on the micro track. Um, yeah, it's totally different. Let's see. Yeah. Right now in uh, a micro tractor, it's totally different, so we would have to redesign that. But that's something we have to do. Like, uh, yeah, we we have to do that like next week, because um, we got to get this metal okay. in place. Yep. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, but see if you can yeah. just start it's adding close. this kind of mechanism to to the micro track, because we definitely need to reinvent that. I think it's convenient. I think this this would work definitely. Um, and it's a very easy mechanism. It's yeah. just two bolts. Okay, that that could change 
but we don't want to change the position of the motor i don't think um no so we'll just i'll just probably well there may need to be separate that plate maybe that plate that's currently is you can cut that in half and then add a box around the uh, upright frame part and then the bottom part of the plate is just going to be there to hold the axle or well yeah a devil's in the details we got to look into the cad and and see exactly what we got in there so but yeah that's that's a thing on our to-do list once we okay. uh yeah um so if roberto's doing that work on uh, on a loader part that's good but yeah i mean this remounting of the the motors there that is a pretty decent priority you know because we got to get that as soon as possible so maybe just start to see how how that might begin to fit you've got some you know you got a few tasks on your list um but let's see so you're doing uh, definitely do the track links to get those DXFs and get that CNC cutting tool chain into place. But after that, a switch to the yeah maybe do do the motor remounting since you're working on all the, this cleanup work on a on a tractor. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll try to nest some stuff first. That shouldn't take long. Yeah, and then I'll try to get back to some details. Yep. On the assembly. Yeah. All right. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, so I think that covers, uh, let's see, does that cover everybody? I think so, pretty much. Um, okay. I have a question here, Paul. Ahmed is still there. Yep. He sent me uh, the email to upload. I was just wondering, what are all the changes that were made to this file? So I can put that in the comments. Um, yeah. First one, I have uh, the file which is already there. Uh, it's totally different that I have now. Uh, first, the, the hole in, in the middle of uh, of uh, of the part which is carrying the belt is not there. Uh, second, uh, my part is totally bigger than you have already. Okay, there's a big change in, in my part uh, except that you have. So uh, please let's check it again. I have already okay. sent it. So you basically, it looks like it's completely redone from scratch. Is that what you did? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, let's check it again. And uh, you put the bolt in the middle of, uh, which is between the two belts. Uh, maybe you, uh, it will make a conflict if the belt is moving. Uh, maybe it will, the bolt will touch the belt. Okay, that's why I make it from scratch, from zero. Uh, let's check it again, and uh, if it's good with you. Um, it's okay. Uh, I don't know, Martin. Can you can you see it really quickly if it's because I'm going to use his to continue with the making. Right. The, Where's uh, the file? Margin. Where's the Where is uh, it? You should have gotten an email. I haven't uploaded it yet because I, I wanted to get some feedback on. It, Just but, now. Uh, you should have it in your email. Is this from before the the one that was sent now? Uh, yeah. Just now, I think seven minutes ago. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, let's take a look at it, how that looks. So, I mean, that's the file for... So, uh, remember, Lex, there's two types of files. One is the motor file, and the other one is the carriage file. So... I'll we'll use what Ahmed did as kind of guidance to do the other one, I guess. Uh, all right. That, is that the way it looks? Is that the best practices for doing um, stuff? A whole bunch of sketches and cut files, or because the other one's completely different, the uh, the previous version. Yeah, I mean this looks pretty decent to me, if it, as long as the dimensions are correct. Here, um, so you did it, Ahmed. You said you did did this pretty much from scratch. Yeah, it's a little bit stronger with the big thickness uh, to carry the load. Uh, also, <laughs> the, the okay, uh, the well. In the middle, uh, in the middle uh, of, of, uh, of uh, the part which is different, which is moving between the belt, I remove this bolt because it will touch the, the belt. If we remove it to the open belt, uh, the bolt is deeper than uh, we have already before. Uh, 
Right. Uh, so you made a bunch of bunch of changes. Let me just tell you a reality check for three D printing. So if I export that, I mean we shrunk it for a reason. And that was so it takes up, so it's faster to print. But let's take a take a look at. Uh, so this is the motor motor piece that STL. So I'm gonna export it to STL, and then I'm opening up Cura to see how what's it say for the the print time. Uh, if it's acceptable, we can do it. What's acceptable? We've got how many of these do we have? We have two, four. Well, I mean, the existing one works reasonably well. I mean, we didn't have problems with it, but let's let's just have a check here. Because remember, we've got if we've got the a total of four axes, and each axis has four of these pieces. Therefore, we need sixteen of these pieces printed. So, if I'm going to Cura, um, I put in that file, there it is, and, uh, wait, what do you got there, let me see, um, what's the vertical size there, let's see, so at 20%, we've got 10 hours of print, 9 hours of print time at 20% and you want to do it at more like 95% so it's solid so you've got 23 hours per part sorry I need 16 days to print that no 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 this wouldn't let's I mean we can flip it um, probably half that time no I mean orientation doesn't change your print time if you're so I mean you flip it down um, yeah we still got 24 hours 52 minutes really. so no we don't have no we don't have 16 days we have four days or three days of printing so no um, there's a reason why we we kept it where it was before and that is for print times no we got to go back to the other one the the one we which we had but didn't you work didn't you update that one already or you started from scratch no i started from scratch okay no we gotta we gotta go back to the other one um okay. it was like it was much more sparse yeah it was much more sparse and the, so, the, the reason is because of the print time so, have you guys ever done anything with like a uh, lattice optimization or like a yeah. lattice structure out of there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're that's mainly within the. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That wouldn't change much. You basically have to have meat on it, you know. Like, you you want to print it at best, at very full infill. Because if it's partial infill anyway, that's going to be much weaker. I mean, you can optimize, but you're optimizing for a weak part. So it doesn't really help. the The best way to do it is to get it pretty solid, which makes it like, for example, I printed the bushings for the CEB press as pretty much solid. I did ninety five percent. So um, yeah, no, we got to go back to the old stuff. So let's see. I mean, I think we're pretty much well oriented, Lex. You got to go back to uh, the one that's on a. yeah the sparse one <laughs> and they work i mean they're all right they're all right they work um let's see um is that the one let's make sure we've got the correct one that's lex you built upon let me see i've got one of those parts right here i can compare that hold on just a sec yeah the only change i made was to make the belt hole, uh, belt uh, wider but you can see it, it uh, overlaps on the belt, on the uh, bolt hole. Sorry, uh, jumped out of the room for a second. No, anyway, I think the one that's I'm seeing, we got to make sure we're working on the right right part to begin with. But the one at the part library, I, I believe that's the, that's the one we want to be working from. Lex, the one you you worked over already yeah 
Um, let's see the. Let me see. The, the bolt in the middle is uh, okay. Remove the bolt in the middle, which is the, the middle of uh, uh, between the belt, um, because it, it will be it will touch the it will, it will touch the bolt the belt. Sorry. Um, the bolt will touch the belt. Okay, so you have to remove it. Well, the one that Lex that you showed, I mean, that looked pretty good to me. So, I mean, I'll take a look at it after this meeting to reconfirm. But no, that's, I mean, that's the latest we have. And this one's just a little too large. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, does that answer the question, Lex? Uh, well, I guess we're still not sure about the bolt. But, yeah, I, so I'll take, I'll take actually the, the previous one. Because the only change I made was to uh, widen you're, you're, the belt hole. Right. Are you concerned about the the bolt touching the belt yeah well you have to check that you put in your your pulley um well we can do that um yeah that's a that's a rapid you can check that ra rather rap rapidly you just put the pulley in there and see if there w would be a belt conflict but i don't think so i think that i mean i'm just looking at this like say that's the same thickness as before it has to be six millimeters little more than six millimeters in this picture we have uh, 0.61 inch it'll be it'll be close but it I don't think no, it will it's touch nine, it's, it's gonna be nine centimeters according to the um, nine centimeters uh-huh and how long is your notch right now yeah if you if you open up the slides again and look Point at the, six. Um, yeah uh, the, the pulley uh, that uh, uh, the diagram for the pulley that Alchemy gave—it's uh, nine centimeters. Yeah. Uh, opening. So it's nine plus nine, and you know, and then the in between. Yeah. Oh wow, that's uh, nine plus nine. That's quite yeah. quite sizable. No, that's that's right. Well, if it's twenty-seven point five millimeters, if that is the correct one, now Ahmed, where where did you pull that pulley from? I'll, I'll try to get it now. A moment. Yeah. I'll yeah. do the length right now. Right. So it's over one inch. In other words, whatever we're doing here, it should be fine. Here it's 1.2 inches. So if this is 0.6 times 2 is 1.2 inches, so we should be fine. Yeah. I mean, just by the dimensions, uh, let me see. So now the real test would be to look at uh, Lex's updated file. So let's download. Let me just download that and make sure that your hole is also 0.6 inch. But if it is, then we're good. Uh, the one I did, it was before I saw the, the new diagram. So it may not be, uh, it's, it's wider, but I don't know if it's wide enough. Okay. Um, Okay, so this that's the one. Wait, is that the one? I can't really see here. It says uh, Marchin is having connectivity issues. Okay, well let's okay, let's measure. That, yeah, that's the one I did. So you can see the bolt there. I don't know what width it is. I don't remember. Point five. So you got twenty-five millimeters, and you have the bolt. Okay, but there's that bolt going in. Um, you know what we can do? You can use a washer and not use that bolt hole if we get into conflict. Because, as I said, we can put metal plates around this too or just use washers. So if you use the recess for the bolt hole, then you're getting closer to the belt. But you don't have to. You can put a washer outside of this bolt and go from there. So I think we'd be okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll continue. So you got point five then. inches. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Just continue on this one. I think that that would work. Uh, but basically, wait a minute. But no, no, no. But hold on a second. The one we said to. But this is not the thing. This is not the critical one. The the one we were talking about. Just for clarity, here in a document, we're talking about the idler, the the carriage pieces. That's the thing that has to have the the holes for the bushings a little larger. 
so it's kind of a, this this one here that we're talking about right now is kind of uh it's not really relevant because uh, it's not okay, as important sure. as the other one that, that that those parts are pretty much okay we don't have to widen the 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 hole for the the shaft but we do have to widen the hole for the bushing on the carriage the piece okay. yes 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 so so that's the task don't worry about the one we we're just talking about for now okay. yeah yeah so i would say 1 16th just get them 1 16th larger and then in diameter but not the length length is good so as soon as you get that then i can print one out and see if then the the bearings are the bushings in there are just slightly slightly loose yeah uh, what about the second one it does not affect making it six inches long does not affect the print too or is that something different oh uh, sorry say it what's the question the, the next number two number, number two, two says to make it six inches long yes 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 we need to extend that just a little bit the idea is that that stock steel comes in six inch wide sections and if this is 5.9 it will be just slightly off so yeah i mean you you would like to do that too yeah so before you print anything yeah 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 do, do one and two yeah okay. yep now when i say one sixteenth larger that means diameter All right. So in other words, yeah. So the half is not going to be just just make sure you're paying attention to diameter versus radius. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, as soon as we have that, we can print that out. Uh I've got a lot of the the motor pieces printed out and we can use the ones, well, for the single belt ones, we can reuse the single belt ones, but we do do have to reprint the the double belt ones. Yeah. Uh, but we do have to go back to um, this stuff here. Yep. The smaller, smaller version. Okay. Um, is that good for now then? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, so let's quit here. Long meeting here. Uh, let's get going, and uh, I'll I'll take a look at more of these files, and I'll see if I can uh, Ahmed, I can give you a task or two, just to to focus this on exactly what okay. we need as the next step. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Then, so we'll we'll continue talking uh, this weekend. We're building a torch table. We should be pretty good. We should be able to uh, get the definitely the torch height controller. That should be a piece of cake. I'm gonna try to see if we can get the auto ignition. Um, the gas control sh and auto ignition should be part of it. For the auto ignition, what I'll do is uh, basically a spark, not a spark, but a basically a heating element, a nichrome element igniter. So we'll see if that, that would work. But yeah, we want to have a fully automated CNC torch table. Uh, that's exciting. We'll see if we can finally start cutting our parts here in house just about as the norm, as the norm instead of shipping that out. But thanks everybody. So you got plenty of to do and feel free to email me. And otherwise, we'll talk next time. I'll report to you on a torch table build next Tuesday, 1 p.m. All right? Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.